Hello everyone, this is Dr. Meher Shah once again with another video. In this video, we are going to learn what is payback period and how to calculate sums where they are asking us to find the payback period under the chapter project selection under the subject project management. Again, this is a very important topic for all the TYBMS students who are going to appear for semester 6. So let us see what do you mean by payback period and how to solve sums where they are asking us to find the payback period. Now we are going to take up two sums in order to clear this entire concept. So let us see one by one. So let us see what exactly is payback period. Now payback period method is defined as the number of years required to recover the original cost invested in a project. It means whatever investment you are going to make, after how many years will you be able to recover that cost? Now to understand that, okay, we have taken one small example. Let's say there is an investment project available at the cost of rupees 5 lakhs. The moment you will invest in that particular investment project, it will give you an annual cash inflow of rupees 1 lakh per annum. It means after investing 5 lakhs in a project, every year you will be able to recover 1 lakh per annum. So in this way, if we are asked to calculate the payback period, then we will calculate in a simple manner that will be 5 lakhs divided by the cash inflow per annum. So it will be 5 lakhs divided by 1 lakh. It means you will take approximately 5 years to recover your cost. This is a basic example of payback period method. Okay. So if you have made an investment of 5 lakhs, every year you are going to earn 1 lakh. So it will take 5 years to recover your cost. This is known as payback period. Now, Payback period method has two conditions in which you can solve the sum. Number one, when cash inflow is constant every year, then payback period is equal to cash outflow divided by cash inflow per annum. And second, when cash inflow are not constant every year, then payback period is equal to Completed years plus required inflow divided by inflow of the next year. So there are two methods in which you can solve the sum depending upon the cash inflow given in the question. So now we will take a one sum from each method and try to understand how to calculate payback period when cash inflow is constant and when cash inflow is not constant. So let us see one by one how we need to solve payback period problem sums. Okay, let us see problem number one when cash inflow is constant every year. The question is in front of you. Calculate payback period from the following details. Cash outflow that is the investment value is 20 lakhs. Number of years have been given to you as 5 years. The cash inflow, if you make that particular investment, are 4 lakhs per annum. If you can see carefully, every year it will generate rupees 4 lakhs. Now, if you look carefully, the value of cash inflow is constant every year. Okay, so the rule states that if the cash inflow annually is constant then the payback period will be calculated with the help of the following formula that is payback period is equal to cash outflow divided by cash inflow per annum now in the sum okay the cash outflow given is 20 lakhs and cash inflow per annum is rupees 4 lakhs so your payback period will be calculated as 20 lakhs divided by 4 lakhs 
Okay, so 20 divided by 4 will give you an answer of 5 years. So the payback period for this particular problem sum was 5 years. It means that if you are making an investment of 20 lakhs, it will take you 5 years to recover the cost. So this is how we need to solve the sum when the cash inflow remains constant every year. Always remember, whenever the cash inflow is constant, the problem sum becomes very simple. However, if the cash inflow is not constant every year, then we have to do some calculations. So now let us see problem number two, how to solve a sum when cash inflow are not constant every year. The question is in front of you all. Calculate the payback period from the following details. Cash outflow is 1 lakh. That is nothing but the investment value. Again, the number of years are given as 5. And the cash inflow representing every year are given as 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 and 30,000. So if you look at this carefully, the cash inflow for each and every year are different. They are not constant. So whenever the cash inflow are not constant for every year, then we'll have to do some calculation. So now let us see how we need to solve this particular sum. First, you'll have to create a new table. The table will look something like this. First column will be years. Second will be cash flow or cash inflow. And third, cumulative cash flow. Now that is a very important column that is required. Under here, we'll note down the five numbers which I have given to us. So that is five years. Under cash flow, we'll note down 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 and 30,000. Now we need to find the cumulative cash flow. Now always remember for cumulative, the first value remains as it is. So 20,000 will remain as 20,000. Now we need to add the next year to the previous year and get the cumulative. That is also nothing but, yeah, you know, in simple term, they call as zigzag adding. So 20,000 plus 30,000, it will become 50,000. 50 plus 40 is 90,000. 90 plus 50 is 1 lakh 40,000. And 1 lakh 40 plus 30 is 1 lakh 70,000. So our total cumulative cash flow is 1 lakh 70,000. Now, in order to find the payback period, when the cash inflow is not constant. Okay, the formula is a little different. So we'll first note down the formula. The formula states that payback period is equal to completed years plus required inflow divided by inflow of next year. Okay, now let us see how to calculate this payback period. The cash outflow in the sum is rupees 1 lakh. So now we have to look into the cumulative cash flow column and let us find in which year do we recover 1 lakh rupees. Now we can see that in year number 4, okay, we recover 1 lakh rupees but the value is going beyond 1 lakh. The question is that we need to find out when we are able to recover rupees 1 lakh. But in the 4th year, the value is going beyond 1 lakh. So the rule states, whenever the value goes beyond what is required, we have to take one year before that. So we will take one year before that. So that will be three years. So my completed years will be three. But in the third year, I was able to recover 90,000 only. So how much amount do I still require in order to complete the outflow value? That is nothing but 1 lakh minus 90,000, which is 10,000. So my required inflow is 10,000. Upon inflow of the next year, the next year ka inflow is nothing but 50,000. So completed years, 3 years. Required inflow will be 1 lakh minus 90,000, which is 10,000. And inflow of the next year, which is 50,000. So using these three values, we'll substitute in the formula. So it will be three years which are completed 
plus 10,000 divided by 50,000. 10,000 divided by 50,000 will give you 0 0.2. So my final answer, that is my final payback period will be 3.2 years. So I will take 3 years, 2 months to recover the cash outflow of rupees 1 lakh. Only after that, the company will be able to generate profit. So in this way, we have to solve a problem sum where the cash inflow are not constant every year. So with this, we were able to solve two problem sum. One, where the cash inflow was constant every year. And second, where the cash inflow was not constant every year. I hope everyone understood how to calculate payback period method sums based on these two practical examples. So with this, the topic based on payback period comes to an end. Thank you.